In this lesson, we'll be learning about the fundamentals of lighting. So if I was to ask you the shape of this object, uh, you would probably say that it's a circle. But what if I asked the three dimensional shape? You couldn't tell me. You'd probably have to guess. Uh, you'd say that it's a sphere. The reason why you can't tell me is because of the lighting. But this object could be anything. It could be a cone. It could be a sphere or it could be some other shape. The reason why you can tell the shape now is because of the shadow. The shadows reveal the form and the direction of the light makes the shadow. So the first lesson is, and it's very important to remember this, that shadows are as important as the light. Do not be afraid of shadows. Shadows help reveal the form of three-dimensional objects so a more practical example would be let's say you made this object you went through the trouble of sculpting it and detailing it and then you lit it like this that would be terrible lighting something from the front from the camera angle is one of the easiest ways to flatten it to make it look flat and if we move the light we could see more of the details in that object. So lighting something from the front is very undesirable because it usually makes it look flat. But there will be some scenarios where you might want that. For example, if what you want to show off is not the object itself, but the material or the texture or a pattern that you made, you'd want to light it from the front. Otherwise, what we'd want to do is we want to light the object that from an angle that reveals the form so we could light it from the top or we could light it from the side which reveals more of the form or we could light it from the back there are multiple ways to light an object depending on the object itself uh, like a person or a vehicle you'd want to see the direction that reveals the most form and looks the best for that object and we want to try not to light the object from the front from the direction of the camera. In this lesson we're going to learn about size, how the size of the light affects your shadows. So a smaller light will have sharper and harsher shadows and a bigger light will have softer shadows. The reason is because the light is so big it wraps around the object and it gives off softer shadows so if we use this as an example if we use a big light and you can see the shadows are soft and if we use a small light the shadows are much sharper we use small lights to show off small details on an object and we use a bigger light to hide imperfections so on a human person we usually use big lights to hide skin imperfections and if you want to show off something like a rock or something that has a lot of detail you want to use small lights and the size of the light depends on the distance from the object so if we use this big light and we move it way back in the distance the shadows the shadows it will cast will be like of a small light is going to have sharp shadows and if we move the light up close to the object then it's going to have softer shadows so this is how this apple would lo look like if it was lit by a really small light and if and if we make the light much bigger you can see the shadows get much softer and this depends on the distance so if we make this light like this and we move this closer you can see the shadows getting softer of course the closer the light the brighter it will be so we'll have to adjust the intensity according to the distance and if we move this same light really far back like over here and increase the brightness you can see the shadows are very sharp so the size of the light matters according to the distance from the object as well
this video is a small part of my full course in which I teach you everything to do with lighting in Unreal Engine from product lighting to automotive lighting and some interior architectural visualization to some exterior scenes. If you want, you can click the link in the description and check out my course. Thanks. Now back to the video. So the next lesson is readability. This consists of two things. The first is adequate lighting, which means to have enough lighting. As we can see in this scene, we don't have enough lighting. And in this one, we can all agree that it's too bright. There's too much lighting. So to have enough lighting is the first thing. And the second thing is object separation. So in this, the objects start to merge together and if we add a light over here, we can separate these objects. This is usually called rim lighting. So the first thing we want to do is get the right amount of light. It shouldn't be too dim or too bright. So once we get the right amount of light, we can see that this apple, the dark parts are starting to merge into the background. So to fix this, to separate the object, we're going to add a light behind it. This basically is called a rim light, and this carves out the object from the background. This can work for scenes like here, where the shadows start to merge into the background, which is also black, or it could also work for something that has a background that the color is the same as the object so if we add the rim lighting it separates the object from the background it carves it out and the last lesson is emphasis now in this picture if you were to ask me which ball you are looking at i would have no idea but in this one i could tell you you're looking at this ball so emphasis is making the subject or the area brighter where you want the viewer to look at. So in this example, as you can see, we have three apples here. But if we make this apple brighter, we are emphasizing this one. And automatically, when someone looks at this image, they will look at this apple first. This is where their eyes are drawn to. This is emphasis. Now I'm going to use all the techniques we learned to light this scene. So first I'm going to add a light. And I'm going to find a good direction for this light. So something like this. And now I'm going to adjust the brightness. We, we also want to find a good size for our light. What kind of shadows do we want? So I'm going to make this 50 by 50. This is a good size for now. And now we want to fill in this area where there's pure black. So we want to fill in the shadows. So I'm going to duplicate this light and move it over here on this side. But we don't want to completely get rid of shadows. This will make the object look flat. So we're going to reduce the light in intensity on the side and make it very light. And now we want to separate the objects from each other. So I'll duplicate this light and I'll move it behind them. Something like this. Maybe make this bigger slightly like this reduce the intensity like this and we set up a simple lighting setup this is usually called a three-point lighting setup where you have your main light and this is your key light the main light that lights your object and then you have a fill light to fill in the shadows and then you have a rim light to separate your object we can also emphasize the front apple if we want in this scenario by adding in a point light.
and changing the angle to only affect this apple and increasing the brightness slightly and this way we emphasize this apple so we used all of the techniques uh, direction to create shadows and we created emphasis we used the rim light to make readability we have the correct amount of light we filled in the shadows with a fill light so this is all of the techniques you want to use to light anything basically you can use this to light anything you want